Hello and welcome to the Church of the Holy Comforter's virtual Sunday liturgy on this eighth Sunday after the Feast of the Pentecost. As always, it's a delight to have you joining us today. If you'd like to learn more about the Church of the Holy Comforter, please follow the links below to our website and to our Facebook pages. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the foundation of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask in our ignorance and asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things for which our worthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Genesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed all about that region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. When Jesus sees the large crowd, he has compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. In the name of the all-compassionate Lord, amen. <clears throat> Christ has no body on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. Christ has no body on earth now but yours. In our gospel, Jesus looks compassion on the crowd. So can you do this? Can you look compassion on this world? I took a two-year residency in compassion, learning the virtue of compassion in clinical pastoral education as the Episcopal chaplain to Johns Hopkins Hospital. A humbling and rigorous education like any virtue, compassion comes from unlearning bad habits and learning good habits. To wake up every day with the desire to be a compassionate person and find out in every seminar how much I fail, years striving to change my ways. And a central image that I learned is that of a person trapped in a pit a poor, sick person suffering in a hospital room. They're like someone trapped in a muddy pit, unable to climb out on their own, needing help. And my job is to help them. The link between me and them is their suffering and my compassion, my desire to help them in their despair and pain, to look compassion on them. Not as Jesus did, because I'm definitely not Jesus. But to see the sorrowing, sad person in front of me as Jesus. It's the piety I learned from the Daughters of Charity, to see Jesus in the person of the sick and the poor not lowering the suffering person to a lower status, but raising them up to the level of God's beloved. Think of a person stuck in a muddy pit, unable to climb out because the sides are steep and slippery. How do I respond? I don't look condescension or pity down on them. I remember how I felt when I was sick and in pain, lying in bed wondering whether I would ever use my arm and hand again, whether the searing pain would ever diminish, whether I would even wake up after they open up my spine. And I wonder 
what the person in the pit is feeling. I don't just offer a platitude and walk on by. I'm not indifferent. I don't jump in the pit with them and get stuck myself. And I certainly don't give advice that assumes I know their pain. Pity, advice, platitudes, indifference, vain assumptions are all vices and compassion is the virtue. In fact, the word compassion is a slippery devil on its own, a weak relative of the disturbance that Jesus feels in our gospel. Literally, compassion means to suffer with or suffer together. Jesus looks at the crowd scurrying about on the shore. He and his disciples are weary from travel, exhausted, overworked, and thousands of people beg them for healing, rescue, salvation. Jesus is in a small boat looking for a deserted place, for a wilderness empty of people and their needs. But he sees overwhelming numbers of desperate people and he does not sail on by. He lands the boat and comes ashore to help. The Greek word translated as compassion is not a mere feeling. The Greek word literally means from the guts, a roiling, churning, gut-wrenching urgency, like a punch in the gut or a wave of overwhelming nausea, a sensation that demands action. In fact, compassion is the urgency that connects emotion to action. To look, compassion connects to the necessary necessity for loving care to get out of the boat and help people. Compassion does not allow us to ignore the need, and it doesn't mean jumping into the pit with them. It means reaching out, grabbing hold of a sturdy root with one hand, extending the other hand to the person in the pit and helping them to climb out of their despair. See a suffering person, sit down and listen and connect. Ask them how they feel, what they desire. Offer a shoulder to cry on, maybe a, a tissue or a glass of water. Reflect back to them their reality and honor them. Respect their feelings and their story. Compassion is a difficult demand and a complicated virtue. Jesus and his disciples respond to the real needs of real people the peasants milling around on the shore are desperate. The evil of Rome impoverishes them and oppresses them. And their own religious and political leaders, well, they collaborate with that evil. The people are food insecure, victims of violence, sick and poor. And they are truly lost sheep who need a good shepherd. They need food, comfort, respect, healing, liberation. So Jesus teaches the good news of the coming kingdom of God, heals them, feeds them, offers them hope. But remember that Jesus is God and we're not. The Holy Spirit empowers Jesus in ways we cannot access, but the Spirit does give each of us disciples useful, humble opportunity the opportunity to look compassion and to offer our gifts, the faith that we may come alongside the poor and suffering and not abandon them or disrespect them. Look your compassion on people in need. Offer out of your limited resources what you can. Respect them and honor them. See Jesus in them. Moreover, look on your own selfishness pride and complacency. Don't be lukewarm, be compassionate and wise. Don't say, I'm rich, I've grown wealthy, I don't need a thing. Realize your own poverty, blindness and naked needs. Repent and hold on to Jesus's outstretched hand. Then offer your hand to others in humility and love. 
help them up. Remember the Jesus who looks compassion on the whole world, and especially the poor, the sick, the marginalized, the captive. Jesus comes to save us all. Where does your loyalty to Jesus overcome your complacency? Where can your compassion heal your blindness? We need Jesus to come alongside us and heal us. Maybe if we touch the hem of his garment, he will rescue us. Salvation is not merely personal happiness in eternity. Jesus seeks to save, heal, rescue, deliver, liberate, unchain us all, to save us from our pride and prejudice, to heal our infirmities, to rescue us from sin and death, to deliver the whole world from evil, to liberate us all from captivity, to recover our sight so we can look compassion on the world. So come alongside Jesus. Be the feet going about doing good. Be the hands that bless the world. We are not sheep without a shepherd. Follow Jesus, listen to him. Hope to lie beside still waters. Trust that grassy meadows lie before us and that Jesus will set the table for all of us. Amen. We pray. Living God, speak to us in the place where we are today and make your presence known. Speak to us the words of affirmation that we may know that we are loved by you. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, speak to us in the place where we are today, even in the face of darkness. Speak into the uncertainty of our times and reassure us that you hold the future. Lord, in your mercy. Speak to us in the place where we are today and bring hope for days to come. Speak words of comfort and of healing and words of compassion for those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, speak to us in the place where we are today that we might speak a word for our times. Speak into the future that lies before us and grant us grace as we seek to live out that future. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, speak to us in the place where we are today, that we might hear again your voice. Speak to us on the highest heights and in the deepest depths. And may we know and be known by the one whom you love. Lord, in your mercy. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and burn in your hearts forevermore. Amen. Know that Jesus Christ is risen, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.